Our next speaker is uh, <clears throat> John Stone. Uh, John is associate professor at the Harvard Medical School and director of clinical rheumatology at Mass General. Um, he received his bachelor's at Emory, medical degree at Harvard. He was at uh, UC Berkeley for a uh, master's in public health, intern in residency at Hopkins, um, did a postdoc fellowship at UC San Francisco. Um, he was at uh, Johns Hopkins and head of the Vasculitis Center before leaving, going up to uh, Boston. He's uh, been with up to date. He has over 100 book chapters, 150 peer reviewed articles, and he's going to talk today about ANCA associated vasculitis. John. Okay, hope everyone can hear me all right. So I'm going to talk about B cell depletion and ANCA associated vasculitis. Um, in particular, I'm going to consider in detail uh, the rituximab and ANCA-associated vasculitis trial, the RAVE trial, um, and ask you to consider, and I'm happy to uh, answer your questions uh, at the end, about what the results of the RAVE trial mean for your patient. I was uh, walking on the beach last night as the sun was setting, and I was just struck by the contrast. It was such a beautiful setting, and I'm here to talk about diseases that are horrible diseases, and you all know that. If you've been practicing rheumatology as long as you have, then you've seen how horrible ANCA-associated vasculitis is. But I am pleased to tell you that this uh, setting sun that we see here and the rising moon um, uh, is the sun setting on cyclophosphamide in this disease. It's literally been several years since I've used cyclophosphamide to treat ANCA-associated vasculitis, and at the end of the presentation, I hope that you'll understand why. Uh, but these are horrible diseases. This is a patient I was referred uh, about 10 years ago because her ANCA-associated vasculitis was uh, thought to be raging out of control. And you can see her chest radiograph here. Uh, this chest radiograph was obtained just about 16 days after she started cyclophosphamide and high doses of glucocorticoids for her newly diagnosed Wegener's granulomatosis, granulomatosis with polyangiitis. So the cavitary lesion certainly looks like it might be GPA raging out of control, but this was her chest x-ray um, when she presented. She actually had no pulmonary disease at the time of presentation. So she was admitted to our hospital, and a CT scan on the night of admission showed this, these horrific cavitary lesions. I rounded on her, on her that evening. She was able to converse somewhat, although she was clearly very ill. And the next morning, she was non-responsive. So we obtained a uh, head CT and followed by a, head, a brain MRI, and this is what we see here. And to make a long, painful story short, she died. Um, after uh, many days in the neuro ICU of not one but two fungal infections that had complicated her disease only 16 days after starting therapy. So this is one of the reasons that ANCA-associated vasculitis is a horrible disease. These are her lungs um, at autopsy. So. Um, I'm going to tell you about another patient now uh, whom I evaluated for the first time about three years ago, um, a 37-year-old man who looked like he should have been in Dr. Wortman's uh, lecture. He actually presented with calf pain, an unusual presentation, um, and he had an elevated uh, serum CK greater than uh, 2,000, um, and he had an MRI that showed uh, enhancement in his gastrocnemius muscles. So that was one of the ways that he presented. It was an unusual presentation. But he also presented in a, in a more classic way for ANCA-associated vasculitis. He had a migratory oligoarthritis. And this is one of the pearls about this disease. Um, patients present with a migratory oligoarthritis both at the beginning and then if they flare when the disease comes back,